Alright, so Butch Hartman released a new video a few days ago, and if you're in the Danny Phantom fandom at all, you will know which one I'm talking about. If not, allow me to summarize very briefly. In the video, Butch talks about his original character, Flynn Fenton, an older brother of Danny who got kidnapped by a ghost and pulled into the ghost zone where he has resided for many years and has forgotten about his family. It's bad, and dumb, but we can take solace in the fact that since Butch doesn't own the rights to Danny Phantom anymore, his fanfiction isn't any more canon than anything else the fandom makes. And something that I always, always notice when Butch releases a video is how bad he is at character design. Now, before we get any further into the video, because Butch is quite egotistical and has talked about how he thinks he is above critique from anyone below his skill level, let me say a few words about that. First, I am a college-educated artist who routinely makes money off of my art. I have a bachelor's in studio art. I put four and a half years of time, work, and money into my craft, and before that, 15 plus years of self-study, and am plenty qualified to critique Butch. But even if one is not college-educated, you are still qualified to critique bad art when you see it. No artist is above critique, not even the masters. And one does not need to have trained and studied cooking for years to know when something tastes like shit. Likewise, one does not need to train and study art for years to know when art looks like shit. This is not going to be critique anyway, as I have very little positive to say about these designs. I'm going to be harsh on Butch in a way that I never would be during a real critique with my peers. But let's look at it this way. Butch Hartman has been in the industry a long time. He should 100% know better by now. Given how large he's demonstrated his ego to be and how unwilling he is to listen to anything but praise, it's clear as to why he hasn't gotten any better. So I don't really care if I seem harsh. Butch is rich and famous. I'm punching up here. Also important to note, Butch Hartman was not the primary character designer for Danny Phantom. The primary character designer for the show was Steven Silver, who was also the primary character designer for The Fairly Odd Parents and Kim Possible, among many other shows. The general style of the show also appears to be based more off of Steven Silver's stylizations rather than Butch's. This is very apparent when you compare the two's designs of adult Danny. One final note, to help illustrate my points, throughout the video I'll be citing some lines from Valve's absolutely fantastic write-up of their rules for Dota 2 character designs. As even though the write-up is about Dota 2 specifically, the points are so good and brought up so often within character design that they are nearly universal. I'll link the write-up in the description. Alright, so, with all of that out of the way, let's talk about how Butch Hartman is a terrible character designer. Part 1. General Design We'll start with a fairly broad category here, and that's just the overall look of the characters that Butch creates, and there are a few things that catch my eye right off the bat. Firstly, line weight. Line weight is the term used to describe how heavy or thick a line is. A lot of cartoons use variable line weight for aiding in the visual hierarchy of character design. Danny Phantom, in particular, had very thick lines around the outsides of the characters, while features inside use thinner lines. Line weight is a huge topic with tons of applications, but I'm not going to go into it in this video. In his digital art, Butch uses a pen brush tied to get larger and smaller depending on how hard he's pressing down with his tablet pen. I have no idea why he does this, because he doesn't use line weight in any meaningful way at all. Like what is this, Butch? What is this? Where he decides to put thick lines versus thin lines is inconsistent and it's obvious very little thought was put into it. He doesn't use line weight as a tool to emphasize any particular part of a design, or to imitate depth or shadows, or even to imitate the show's style of having thick outer lines and thin inner lines. His thoughtlessness for line weight contributes to the sloppy, unpolished, and cluttered look of his character designs. Secondly, clutter. Some pertinent notes from Valve's write-up. Large areas of visual complexity can overwhelm the eye and become monotonous. Balance areas of detail by adding larger areas of less detail where the eye can rest. By creating these larger, less detailed zones, areas of detail will have a much greater visual impact. Detailed areas should comprise a small percentage of the overall character and be concentrated in areas of importance. 
Butch Hartman seems to be averse to letting the eye have a place to rest. Detailed character designs can work, to be sure, but they require a lot of careful thought and balance, and there's a thin line between detailed and cluttered, one that Butch crosses a lot. Misery Vex, a character from the aforementioned video he just put out, is one of these characters. I mean, look at her. We'll get into analyzing her more in detail, but just look at how much is going on here. Really, the only place free from relative clutter for the eye to rest is her crotch, which is an interesting, though unintentional, I assume, design choice. The cluttered designs also show that Butch has no sense of leading the eye or visual hierarchy, because most of the spiderweb design of her cape, as well as the pointed bottom of her belt, also tend to point towards her crotch, while the horizontal lines of this pattern draw the eyes to the boots. The fact that they, too, are relatively simple, solid color fills also makes them a natural secondary focus among the details. Really, the only thing going on for her face is the color, given how much it otherwise is visually indistinguishable from the other clutter here. Clutter is seen a lot in Butch's more ambitious designs, like Ten Years Later Jack, Jazz, and Danny, which again has the problem of most of the visual lines pointing towards the crotch. But Misery Vex is by far the worst I've seen from him. Thirdly, visual hierarchy. It's extremely clear to me that Butch has very little sense of visual hierarchy in his designs. Visual hierarchy is exactly what it sounds like, deciding which elements of a character are the most important versus the least important. What should the eye be drawn towards when looking at a character? Danny's ghost design is easy and highly effective. The eye is drawn towards Danny's face due to it being an area of high saturation, his skin and bright eyes, and then towards the logo on his chest due to it being a bright spot on his black suit, and because of the white neckline of his jumpsuit sloping towards it. While I really hate Vlad's ghost design, it does follow some of the same principles. The eye is drawn to Vlad's face and head due to the blue and black contrast of his skin and hair against the predominantly red and white of his outfit. His face is also framed by his collar. Some of Butch's designs do this as well, namely his design for Flynn Fenton slash Exodus, though I'll also talk about why I hate that one when we get to color. And Sojourn also kind of pulls this off. He does at least frame Sojourn's face with a hood, which emphasizes it, though the colors and other visual clutter of the rest of Sojourn's design consistently pull my eye away from his face. His ten years later design for Danny attempts to pull this off by making the logo bright green, but the other elements of bright green on the boots and belt pull the eye to those as well, and there's really no reason to emphasize those. Why would a designer want our eyes to go there instead of to a character's face or logo? In contrast, Steven Silver's ten years later design keeps Danny's design classic. There's no reason to fix something that isn't broken while also adding a couple flares that are not only unintrusive, but still add to visual hierarchy. The added lines on Danny's biceps keep our eyes focused upwards on his chest and face, and his neckline pointing to the logo on his chest is a nice little touch that keeps the eye pleasantly bouncing between his face and his logo. That is a visual hierarchy. To return to Misery Vex, there is no visual hierarchy. Literally at all. <laughs> Again, there's so much visual clutter that the biggest draw for the eye is the one spot to rest, which is her crotch. We could argue that her spider headdress draws the eye to the face, but the copious use of that same bright green in larger areas on less important parts of her design, like her boots and cape, draw the eye to those instead. We could argue that her face, being purple, draws the eye there, but her face has so much visual clutter between the makeup, the chin strap, the headdress, and the fucking terrible racist minstrel lips that the eye really has no place to rest there. What do we focus on? Her makeup? Her eyes? The blinding pure f white of her teeth? The headdress? And again, the visual clutter of the rest of the design pulls our eye away anyway. Why should I look at the cluttered mess of her face when I could instead? stare deeply into the calming black sea of her crotch. Part 2. Color Alright, so, we've covered some general problems with Butch's designs, but I want to dig a little deeper into a couple of specific problems that I see over and over again with Butch, namely color and value. 
We'll start with color, but since I'll be using the term value in this section as well, just in case anyone isn't familiar with it, value is the term used to describe how light or dark something is in art. Color theory is a huge topic, but I'll try to get into what I mean without making this video hours long. Butch's color palettes suffer from a variety of ills, but mostly saturation and little regard for the color wheel. When choosing a palette for a character, it's generally wise to stick with a limited number of colors, and usually from a predetermined color scheme dictated by the color wheel. I'll use Valve's write-up to describe the most common color schemes. Complementary color schemes. Complementary hues are on opposite sides of the color wheel. These opposing colors are more intense and vibrate when placed next to each other as they compete for your attention. Split complementary color schemes. One of the complementary colors is split off into a pair of neighboring hues. Analogous color schemes. Analogous colors are next to one another on the color wheel. These colors appear to push at each other, creating an optical illusion where each zone appears larger when it has your attention. Triad color schemes. Triad hues are equidistant on the color wheel. Returning to Flynn slash Exodus, who I've isolated from the image so we can more easily see his color palette without being influenced by the background, we can see that he is primarily made up of three colors, orange, black, and green. If we take away black, he's basically made up of two colors. That's not a lot to go off of. Not only are they both extremely saturated and similar in value, they don't correspond to any particular color scheme and contribute to the design feeling awkward, disjointed, and ugly. If we are going to stick with just two colors, we would be wise to do a complementary scheme. So let's try it. Let's change everything that's green to blue. It already looks a lot better, but let's get rid of the cape because it's just more visual clutter, adds nothing to the character, and does nothing for the silhouette. Literally, why is it there? And then let's make the blue on the chest a little darker and less saturated, so that the eye is drawn to Flynn's face and the head of his staff as the most saturated, bright parts of the design. It's loads better and less painful to look at because the color palette is in line with color theory. Not everything is the same saturation or value. There's less visual clutter, and all of this makes the visual hierarchy easier to understand. If his color palette looks familiar, it's because someone competent chose Maddie's color scheme for a reason. But let's look at Flynn's original color scheme on the color wheel. It's almost analogous, colors that sit next to one another. So what if we want to make it a truly analogous scheme? Well, we don't have to imagine, because Tumblr user The Stove is on Fire redesigned Flynn to be wholly superior to the original Flynn in every conceivable way. Like, I almost literally cannot put into words how much better this design is and how much more I love it. But I'm going to try anyway. Not only does it make better sense from a story perspective, the added red of the blood blossom flowers, along with the layered greens and oranges, creates a much stronger analogous color palette and hammers down visual hierarchy. Our eyes are drawn to the touch of red around his neck and the orange of his hair among the layered greens, and we're also drawn to the flowers at his waist, another important factor to his design, much like Danny's logo, and the light green of his staff and bracelets. The lesser important elements of his design, such as his legs and the inside of his cloak, are unintrusive and not overly detailed or cluttered, but still interesting, tell us something about the character, and help create a strong silhouette and negative space. It's an incredibly strong design, and miles better and more thoughtful than Butch's. In my own redesign of Sojourn, I used a split complementary palette, with a touch of teal for the staff, and again you can see how much more harmonious it looks and feels. This use of bad, limited, thoughtless color theory is present in almost every one of Butch's works. He rarely uses more than two colors, not counting black and variations of black, and never in a thoughtful way. Not only does he not think about overall color palette, he doesn't use his very limited chosen palettes well. To bring back the earlier problem of ten years later, Danny, the usage of bright, saturated green on Danny's belt and boots draws the eye away from his chest and face. It confuses the visual hierarchy. From Valve's write-up, saturation, or intensity of the color, also draws the eye, so saturation levels should be less towards the lower body 
and increase towards the upper body. Choose very small areas for the highest saturation in order to reinforce visual interest. Large areas of high saturation overwhelm the viewer and distract from the visual harmony of the character. Part 3. Value The last problem I'll talk about as far as Butch's bad character design is value. Again, value in art just means how light or dark something is, disregarding color. In almost all art applications, value is more important than color. Imagine if a colorblind person were to look at your art. Would it still be readable even if some of the colors didn't translate? If you can reduce your art to black and white and it still looks good and readable, that art has strong and good values. Looking at Butch's art, we can see that, much like color, he has no meaningful grasp of how to use value effectively. There are different values there, kind of, though they're weak and they do nothing to reiterate visual hierarchy. Let's look at Misery Vex again, because her design really is that much of a dumpster fire. If we reduce her to her values, we can see that the inner lining of her cape is the same value as her base jumpsuit color. The bright green in her gloves is also the same value as her skin. These are the biggest problems value-wise, because they, in effect, reduce her to one giant, single value. If you can't see it, I'll blur the image. Notice how everything just kind of blends into one grey blob? Oh, I'm sorry. Is the amorphous blob Butch likes to put in the background of his images getting in the way? Try this one. Again, the only part that doesn't really blend is her crotch, because of the full black fill. I'll be honest, I actually did try to fix her values for about 45 minutes, but I think she's legitimately unfixable. In Stove's Flynn redesign, we can see that value is used with intent, and that it draws the eye to points of interest. While the values could have maybe been on a bit wider of a light to dark spectrum, the limited values still do their job of leading the eye and establishing visual hierarchy. Let's look at Sojourn again. Like I mentioned, his design does at least emphasize his head with the darkness of the hood, but if we reduce him to his values, we can see that the white and gold of the rest of the design is so close in value so as to basically become nothing but clutter and useless noise. Even his skin, without the extremely saturated green color, isn't that far away from his outfit value-wise. Still, we do at least get a clear focal point of the head framed by the hood. In my own redesign of Sojourn, I attempted to use value to emphasize not only the face, but also the armillary sphere inside of the chest, as well as the van braces on the arms. This, along with the use of an actually thought-out color palette, makes it feel more put together and harmonious. To go back to Valve's Dota 2 write-up, I'll pull up an image of some of their designs reduced to their values. According to this write-up, at least for Dota 2, they actually started with values. That's how important they are, and then added color afterwards. It really shows with how incredibly strong the values are at establishing visual hierarchy, even when blurred fairly considerably. Values are so, so, so important to readability in character design and art overall, and it's legitimately shocking to see how bad Butch is at them. Take a few of his pieces and reduce them to their values. When literally everything in the image is such a similar value that you have to physically dig a character out to understand what you're looking at, that's just extremely, mind-bogglingly bad values. Especially from someone who is a professional and has been in the industry as long as Butch has. There are a few more points that could be made about Butch's character designs, such as his often wonky anatomy, his desperate cleaving to the comic book aesthetic and apparent inability to take in any other form of design inspiration, or his lack of subtlety or nuance. Because if you don't literally put a spider on her head, and her chest, and her staff, and put spider webs on her cape, how will people know she's supposed to evoke a spider? How will people know that Danny's family and friends support him if they don't literally plaster his logo all over their bodies? But suffice it to say that it's legitimately baffling how bad Butch is at character design, given his experience and time in the industry. So, that's all I have to say at the moment about Butch's character designs. There's probably a lot more that I could say and will want to say in the future, 
but for now, I'll leave it at this. I'll also leave you with some reminders to please check out The Stove is on Fire on Tumblr, as well as Valve's absolutely amazing Dota 2 write-up if you'd like to learn more about what makes really effective character design. Thanks for watching.